all the uh, amazing avatars out there. And we're going to get started with a word of prayer. And um, after I pray, just got a few announcements. We got some uh, guests to introduce for church today. And uh, so, yeah, thanks for uh, hanging out. And it's really good to see you. And actually, this is kind of a fun image. So I'm going to take a picture, if you don't mind, real quick. Uh, let me just do this. And I'm going to have to turn this around. Oh, there we go. That's better. I'll just get video, actually. Um, awesome. <laughs> this is fun to see all the avatars out there. Um, actually, let me reset the camera. Yes. Let me reset the camera real quick. All right. I think we're all good to go. Okay, guys. Uh, welcome to church. Let's let's begin with a word of prayer. Um, God, we just want to take a moment to thank you um, that we can just uh, just join you in our spirits, Father. And we know that you're here. We know that you're here with us. We know that you see each and every avatar. And we know that each avatar represents a real person with a real story. God bless each person here. Bless us as we look into you, to the Bible, look into your word. Uh, be with each individual who um, just might be going through a hard time here, that they'll be encouraged today. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen, everyone. All right. Well, we're going to get started with church. If you do me a quick favor, uh, maybe just hit the mute button on your left because I hear some open mics. That'll just be help. Um, and that'd be awesome. Um, the other thing is, too, uh, let's see. We're going to uh, start our sermon in just a second. We do have one announcement, but I have a couple of friends to introduce. Um, one is Pastor Brock and one is Pastor J. Poe. And these guys are doing ministry in virtual reality. And so we've gotten connected over the past, well, I've known Pastor Brock for a while and recently got connected with Pastor J. Poe. And so one of the thing is, at least I guess you guys in VR chat probably know there's more than just, you know, VR church. There's uh, VR church with Pastor Brock, and but there's also Alt Space and there's just a lot of ministry happening here. And we wanted to introduce uh, these guys because where the Bible talks about being fellow co-workers in the physical world, maybe you see churches fight over church members, but in, in virtual reality, that's not a thing, man. Um, so we just want to support each other. And Pastor Brock, I think the, the stage is locked off with the code. So maybe just where you're at, nice and loud, um, introduce yourself, sure, tell us yeah, who you yeah. are, where you're from, and what time your services meet. <sighs> Absolutely. What's going on, guys? Uh, many, a couple of you know me. I'm Pastor Brock, and uh, I've got church services 4 p.m. and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here in VR Chat. And so I also have a Bible study 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday. I'm a ordained Lutheran pastor in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, which is uh, the second largest Lutheran church body here in the United States. Uh, we have about two million members, so that's about you know kind of the size. You, there's probably a, a Missouri Synod church near you. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, just just love doing doing ministry here in VR, talking to people. Usually I go in the the black hat hangout there and. Usually you talk to people, ask people what the meaning of life is, kind of a nice way to get get connected and start asking kind of those deep, amazing uh, questions that can lead to, to amazing conversations about God. So, yeah, if you uh, if you want to join me at 4 p.m. or 8 p.m., just send me a friend request. Would love to love for you to be part of our community, be part of our Discord, and just grateful to my my good friend DJ for having this opportunity to to talk with you guys here. And and yeah, just if you have any questions about what we do, we'd love to. Love to touch base with you on that. So yeah, yeah thanks, for real, bro. man. And uh, definitely, definitely out check out Pastor Brock's service. Happens right after here, or maybe later on uh, today. Uh, you want to catch that too. And then, what do you? Uh, real quick, give us that thirty second, or it doesn't have to be thirty seconds. That uh, image you have. Do you have that on that avatar? And maybe hit us up with a oh, little. Yeah, I can. I can switch it over. Sure. You know, yeah, talk about. Um, yeah, yeah. So I've got. Oh, there we go. Um, so I just got a little. little uh, picture here about the amazing way in which our bodies create and well all cells create adenosine triphosphate this little molecule thing and it, it it's a remarkable i don't really have time to, to break down the whole thing but it's just i think when you look at you know it says in the psalms that the universe declares your handiwork and and i think if we look at just the the, the complexity of even the most basic bacterium and the the the, the way which we can't we can't even like all the king's sources and all the king's men of academia, even today, can't create this. And so why should mindless matter be able to create something that the world's greatest minds are kind of impotent to create? The best we can do in nanotechnology right now is like a 2D print. Like that's how your nano nanoscale computer processor works right now. But like we don't have – I mean this is an, a water wheel and, and there's like a three-stroke engine and a rotor and a stator. It's wild. So, so yeah. yeah, I'd love to talk to you more about that. But 
I just think uh, I think God really shows us that there's there's intention and design behind our existence. We're not just the random mash together of of atoms. So I think that's a, a, a powerful kind of witness to to our existence uh, being intentioned and 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 each one of us having a story that God God intends for us to have. So absolutely, mm -hmm. thanks. I love it, man. Thanks, Pastor Brock. Def, awesome. Definitely check his out. You bet. Um, his serve, church service awesome. out. Pastor Jpo, man, come on up, dude. Um, let's yeah, uh, let's get yeah, introduced. Get up here. Yeah. Uh, so right. you're from. Uh, hey, thanks. Thanks, yeah, Pastor DJ. Yeah, you're from California, right? Is that right? Yeah, Northern California is where I'm at. Yeah, up in just north of Sacramento area, and just want to say thanks, DJ, for your vision, and also just the fact that you're unifying the pastors in the VR metaverse. It's just really cool. I mean, it's so important, and that's how the world. That's how the world's gonna know Jesus is through our love and unity. So this yeah. is awesome. You got a great leader. Yeah. A great leader here. Thanks, but, man. Pastor Thanks, man. Brock, I appreciate thank you. that. Yeah, and by the way, Pastor Brock, if you ever get a chance to hang out with him in the Great Pug or the Black Cat here in VR Chat, I, I actually hung out with him last week, and I learned – and I'm a pastor, and I've done a lot of study, but I actually learned a bunch of stuff when I sat with uh, Pastor Brock as he talked to people about God. It was really cool. So if you ever get a chance, check up with him. But thanks again, DJ, for having me. We actually aren't in VR Chat. Our church, our church is only in alt space right now. So but one actually, that's why I got to leave here just a second. We got to get ready for our 1 p.m. Pacific time, 4 p.m. Eastern time service in alt space. So our church is called Cornerstone VR Church. And actually, I'm a in real life pastor in uh, Northern California, but also have this VR church in alt space. And so I just really love having the interactions. I feel like I've connected with people more deeply even here in the VR space because people are just, man, just so real, willing to talk about real deep things, their real stories. So I've just been blessed. But anyway, I'm a pastor in the Evangelical Free Church denomination. It's a smaller denomination uh, group, but I've uh, been a pastor about 12 years and just love sharing the hope of Jesus. I mean, that's my bottom line is just unifying everyone in the name of Christ and what he's done for us on the cross. So just thank you, DJ. And you guys are always welcome. If you're on Alt Space, check us out at 1 p.m. Pacific Sunday. So God cool, you, man. Thanks, Thank, thanks so much, uh, Pastor Jay. And guys, uh, definitely check yeah. out uh, Pastor Brock, Pastor Jaypo. They have a, a Discord server. So join their Discord. You'll get up to date with what's going on with them. And that'd be great. Uh, let's see. Tyler, can you message Architect see if he's going to be here to moderate? If not, um, we're just be helpful to know that. Uh, that'd be great if you could do that for me. Um, let's see. What else is here? Uh, oh. Hey, Pine's here. Pine, are you feeling okay to talk about life groups? Or I can do it if you want. I didn't want to put you on the spot. Yeah. But if you wanted to, um, you're my announcement person. <laughs> yeah, why don't you come up here to the center, right. introduce yourself, and tell us about life groups. I'm coming. I'm coming. <laughs> I'm <Alrighty>. coming. <laughs> oh, wait. Bad, my bad. No worries. No worries. Alrighty. Take your take your time. Hey, hey, hey. So I'm fine. Welcome everybody. Um, by the way, uh, our architect's not coming. I'm pretty sure he's not coming. I think he's taking a nap because he's sleepy. <laughs> Gotta get his beauty beauty sleep. <laughs> All right. So life groups. Um, only life groups or Discord too? Yeah, all that stuff. Yeah, that'd be great. All right, you can do. All right, so we at VR Church, we have a Discord. So our dis we have like a Discord group, and our Discord channel is like where we come together and get together while we're not in VR. And it's basically where all the action happens, where all the we all um, talk to each other and plan things. And it's also where you can get announcements to uh, when our services are happening. So right before the services happen, there's a little uh, notification that lets you know, hey, this this, this and this is happening. It's always always good to have and yeah it's just um we also pray for each other on the server and we also just hang out and play games with each other so it's always a lot of fun and it's super great and the way you get to our discord channel is through our website um the website is just if you type in your internet browser vrchurch.org if you just type that then and um, you'll come to our website, and it has a bunch of useful information on it. But most importantly, if you go to the top right, there's like a drop-down menu, and there's a Discord link. So if you press that, you'll be invited to our Discord channel, and that's the, that's how you get to our Discord channel. And there's also a bunch of other useful information on there as well, so be sure to check it out. It's super good. And um, 
Live groups. Yeah. So we have services today, but we also have live groups during the week. And live groups are basically a time where we get together and talk more in depth about scripture and other things. And it's just, it's always a super fun time. We don't only talk about scripture. We also sometimes play games or just hang out or just get to know each other more and, and talk. So life groups are Wednesdays and Fridays, I believe. And they're not only in VR chat, they're in VR chat, VR chat, <laughs> <laughs> my brain, VR chat, alt space and rec room. And uh, they're always a lot of fun. They're super great. Um, there's always there's always super great um, games we play and talks we have. So yeah, I'd love to see you there. So Wednesdays and Fridays, live groups. And yeah, that's it for me. Back to DJ. All right. Thank you so much, Pine. I appreciate that. <laughs> Everyone give a clap for emoji for Pine Needles, the one and only. So uh, you know what we need to do, Brock? Uh, I don't know if Pastor J is still here because I know Architect and um pastor bennick uh they have chavurch is that is that the pronunciation i gotta ask him what what their pronunciation is um but uh we got we need like a church but they've got the vr because it's c-h-u-r so the yeah. vr i think it's just maybe church plus i don't know chavurch <laughs> okay uh sorry i don't know that chavurch? that name makes me <laughs> laugh a little bit i don't know i don't know i don't know i haven't okay we need a shared calendar something because you know what Aramaic, right yeah, it's Eric, right? We got to figure out how to like combine our discords or anybody can see the what's going on. Because really, all, if you notice, like Pastor Jpo, Pastor Brock, me, and, and I know maybe you haven't met Benick, is like we have a heart that people grow spiritually. They grow in their relationship with God and Christ. So, you know, if you miss one, maybe there's another one right behind it. I just think we, I know, we got to figure that out where people can see easily um, a collection of what's all that's happening. Uh, for VR Church. Anyway, so that's, I'm just out thinking out loud, yeah. but um, all right, we'll figure that out. All right, everyone, let's hop right into the ser sermon for today. We're going to jump right in. Like Pine says, uh, check out vrchurch.org. And, um, you know, we've been studying the book of Acts. We've been going chapter by chapter through the book of Acts, and it's been a real powerful study. And it's hard to believe we just finished it. I think we started back in early fall, like September, the first weekend of September. And we did the last chapter of Acts like last last Sunday. And I'm kind of like almost bummed to a certain degree because, man, I just loved the book of Acts. It was a, amazing to see God's love and power spread across the globe. And, man, that's that's the heart of it. God wants everyone in this world to experience his love and power. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, what you've done. If you're young, old, rich, poor, black, white, if you're from China, South Africa, I mean, it doesn't matter. God wants his love and power to spread. And it's amazing to see these brave young, brave men and women in the book of Acts who started these spiritual communities and the struggles and difficulties they went through. So I'm kind of almost bummed. I kind of want to do almost like a recap and maybe we'll do something like that. So some of you might be asking, all right, well, what's after the book of Acts? What's next? Um, well, we're going to start a new sermon series. And so here's what happened at the book of Acts. Uh, Paul was in prison uh, for the gospel, for the good news of Jesus Christ, and he was in prison. And church history says he wrote four letters from prison, and they're called the prison epistles. And so that's going to be our next sermon series starting next Sunday, and it's letters from prison, these four letters that Paul wrote, three of them were churches, and one was to an individual. Um, so there, it was Ephesians, Philippians, uh, Colossians, and Philemon. So we're going to be looking at Ephesians uh, starting next week, and it's going to be an amazing study. I'm really excited about it uh, because in the Book of Acts, it you know we really see all the struggle that they went through th through the message of Christ, but we didn't. The Book of Acts didn't really dive deeply into what that message was. And why that message was so radical at that time. And, and even today, what was in those messages that Paul was spreading that made people want to kill him? Well, we're going to find out coming up in the book of Acts. I mean, excuse me, in the book of Ephesians in our new sermon series, Letters from Prison. So I wanted to, to kind of get you primed about that. But also for today is kind of, I don't want to call it an off week, but maybe we'll just call it an in-between week. Um, there's this particular message that I really want to show you from the book of Romans chapter 4. And um, from the book of Romans chapter 4, we're going to be looking at the Living Bible translation of it. And it's really for those of us in here, maybe who are discouraged, we're down in the dumps. Maybe we feel like there's nothing new coming in our life. 
maybe this, we feel like, I don't know, maybe our careers are dead or, you know, my, our dreams have died and, you know, our faith, it just seems really shaky or maybe we don't even have faith at all. And maybe you're just kind of in here just thinking, I don't know, I feel like giving up, but let me just go try out church one last time. And so I just really want to encourage you today for those that feel like you're down and discouraged. Maybe you're having suicidal thoughts or maybe there's loneliness, depression, anxiety. I mean, I don't know what's going on in your life and maybe life's great. And I hope it is, by the way. I hope I'm not trying to speak negatively or paint bleak pictures. I hope things are going great, man. All, you know, God bless you. And I hope things are, you're just experiencing breakthroughs. But for those of us that are going through hard times, this is what this message is. This message is for you. And we're going to be looking at the book of uh, Romans chapter four, and specifically the faith of Abraham. And the Bible shows us in Romans chapter four, this example of faith that God wants us to have and is very, very powerful. And so let's go ahead and start reading. And by the way, I encourage you to go back and read Romans chapter four, read the whole chapter. There's a lot to it. I'm just kind of giving you highlights and chunks and little sections there, but go back and read the full context. It's very beautiful. If you don't have a, a Bible, uh, there's a great app for your, your smartphone called the Version Bible app. That's a great app. Um, online, there's Bible Gateway or Bible Hub. There's some great resources. If you don't physically have a Bible, man, there's, it's online. Definitely search for it. Just Google Romans chapter four. And not only that, find a good translation that'll work for you. Because um, for the longest time, I was reading this older translation and I couldn't understand the Bible. I was like, I don't know what the heck this is. What are they even saying here? But when I found a good translation, um, it really just kind of like shone the light in this darkness. And I just started to understand the scriptures more. So, and there's a ton. You like open, like if you go to Bible Gateway and you click on translation, you'll see a ton of them. So here's some recommendations. Um, I like uh, the Living Bible, which we're using today. Uh, the New Living Translation is kind of the cousin of the Living Bible. Um, the NIV is great. If you see NIV or when I say the New before when I said the New Living Translation, NLT, you might just see the, you should see both the, the letters and then the, the whole spelling of it. So anyways, um, NIV, NLT, the Living Bible, TLB, the message is great. So kind of flip through and find which one helps you understand. So just read a few verses. And if you're like, I don't know what they're saying here, and maybe you're reading something in Old English or something that's hard to understand and, and just kind of keep flipping through. Maybe check out my recommendations or maybe find your own and be like, oh, okay, this one makes sense to me. Let me, let me read through that. And that'll make a huge difference. It'll make uh, Bible reading much more uh, meaningful and understand and more understanding if you pick the right translation. But anyways, so I encourage you to go back and read it. But let's talk about this faith that God wants us to have. And so here's uh, some verses from Romans chapter four. It says this, Abraham was humanly speaking the founder of, of our Jewish nation. So we're introduced to this guy named Abraham. So before Acts and the Apostle Paul and the Apostle Peter, thousands of years before that, God interacted with man and he did it through a guy named Abraham. And Abraham was going to be the father of, our, of the Jewish nation. And God had this plan for the whole world to experience his love and power. But he was going to do it through one single man and through a nation. And he told Abraham, he said, he said these words. He says, I want all nations to be blessed. All nations are going to be blessed through you. And so that was the plan. And so Abraham was, humanly speaking, the, the, the founder of our Jewish nation. Well, what did he, or Abraham, discover about being made right with God? This is an important question. Because some of us might be thinking, asking that same question deep inside our spirit. How, do we, how are we made right with God? How do we discover what that means? Well, in the next verse, it says, If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. So, by the way, doing good deeds is good. If you're doing good things, that's a great thing. You should totally do that. Uh, you know, being nice to people, I guess paying your taxes, I don't know, whatever we uh, describe culturally as good, that's a great thing to do. And you should totally do that. But when it comes to God accepting you, when it comes to you experiencing his love and power, it's not something that you can do good things. It's, it's not like, 
all right, guys, you have uh, a thousand good things you need to do this week. And if you do those a thousand good things, then you are acceptable before God. You are accepted before God. God will then love you. And that is not the case. I know on in human relationships, you know, that, that can tend to be like if we have to do good things at work and, you know, that all makes sense. But when it comes to God, that's not his way. Let me show you what God's way is. And, and here's what it says. For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. It wasn't about giving money to the church. It wasn't about how much money you had in the bank. It was simply about faith. And I, I love this because it's not about your like class, your status in life, your, your grades. You know, some of you are like, thank God, it's not based on my grades or your bank account or your social status or anything like that. It's simply based on believing in God, having faith. And the reason that's significant is because a five-year-old can have faith or a 50-year-old can have faith. It's for everyone to experience. It's not, you know, a, a lot of things we interact with in life are like limited time only. And only if you have a certain amount of money or only if you know this person or only if you can sign up, you know, there's all these limits, limitations in life, which is fine. It's, that's just part of it. But when it comes to the economy of heaven, you know, it's simply about faith. And then look at this next one. It says, when people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. So uh, this totally makes sense. You have a job, um, and when you work your job, you're going to get money, right? Money is sent your way. I don't know how you get your paycheck, but maybe the boss comes to your desk, puts the paycheck down, and he never would say, here's a gift for you. No, man, you grab me like, that's, I earned that. I've spent 40 hours this week working. This is something I've earned. And that makes sense. And that's part of our, you know, earthly economic system. But in the ec economy of heaven, it's different. It's not about doing good things. It's not about working. It's simply about faith. Because it makes sense to work and to receive money. But with God, we are counted righteous because not because of the good things we do, not because of an endless list of rules and thou shalt this and thou shalt not that and regulations we have to follow. No, it's, it's none of that. It's simply by faith, simply by believing in God. Let's go to the next verse here. If I can push the button, can't get it. There it is. Um, so because of what Jesus did, we can experience his faith. And so it says here, if God's promise is only for those who obey the law, then faith is pointless. Faith is not necessary, and the promise is pointless. Basically saying, hey, hey listen, guys, if, if, um, if God's promise is only for those, if you do good, you follow the law, then this faith thing, we don't, we, it's not necessary. It's not needed. It's completely pointless. All right, let's go to the next verse over here. It says, so the promise is received by faith. That's how we receive the promise. It is a given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it. We're going to stop and watch the bombing of uh, church today. I don't know if you guys can see that. Solius, was that you? Maybe that was you, buddy. Was, uh, so let's go over here. So the promise is received by faith. It's not received because of your good works. It's not received because of the, the, the good things you've done or money. You receive it simply by faith. It is given as a free gift. Look at that. I, I love that idea. This relationship with God, this um, love that God wants us to experience is a free gift. And this free gift, we, you know, it's just something we receive. If I go over to, to one of you, let's say uh, I see Oscar over there. If I come to Oscar, I said, hey, Oscar, here's a, here's a free gift I want to give you. Uh, here you go. And then Oscar started pulling money out of his pocket or get his Bitcoins ready to transfer to me. Um, he, that's missing the point, right? Because that's not a, it's, you don't buy gifts. If someone gives you a, a present, you don't spend money on it. No, you just receive it. And it's the same thing of God's promises for us is received by faith. It is given as a free gift, and we are all certain to receive it. 
whether or not we live according to the law of Moses, if we have faith like Abraham's. So this gift, it's by faith. We are all certain to receive it. We are all invited. I love that word all. That's why it's highlighted and italicized, because it doesn't matter who you are or what you've done. Some of you like, Pastor, you don't know me. I am worthless. I am no good. Uh, I might as, might as well. I'm a mistake. I might as well not even exist on this earth. No, well, you are part of the all who are certain to receive it because it's a free gift. You don't have to earn it. You have to buy it. You have to spend money on it. It's because God loves you. And it's if we have faith like Abraham's. And so what kind of faith is Abraham's to receive this free gift? Well, let's go to the next passage of scripture. It says, this is the type of faith Abraham had. This happened because Abraham believed in the God who brings the dead back to life. Oh man, this is just such a powerful port port of scripture where God wants to bring dead things back to life. And maybe for some of you, you're facing something difficult in your life and you're discouraged and and you have a maybe a dead career or a relationship you had is dead or I don't know what's going on. But the type of faith that God wants you to have is like this in verse 17, is is the belief, man, God, you can bring those dead things back to life. This relationship is dead. This marriage is dead. My career is dead. God, you can bring that back to life. So it has to do with our spirits coming back to life. It has to do with just our entire life that God wants us to have that type of faith. And not only like that, that type of faith, but the faith that creates new things out of nothing. And this is really important because some of you are like, man, I wish I had a dead career or a dead relationship. I don't have a career. I don't have a relationship. I have none of those things. And this is the type of faith God wants you to have is to create something new out of nothing. God, I believe that I don't see it in my life, but I believe that you can bring it in. I see nothing in my life, God, but I believe you can bring new things in. Man, that's such good news for some of us because we're looking at our life and we're going, I don't, man, I don't. This isn't happening. This isn't adding up. But the faith that God wants you to have is one that believes in resurrection. And it's also one that believes that you can create new things out of nothing. I think my dog's barking in the background. I just have to ignore my dog. Well, this one's a tough, tough thing, or it can be tough. It says here, and when there was no reason for hope, Abraham kept hoping. And that's so important because maybe for some for some of us, we have reason to hope. Well, well, at least this thing's working out. Well, you know, that other thing, well, that's that might be a thing. So I still have reason to hope. But for Abraham, there is points in his life where there was no reason to hope. It was he added it all up. He tallied all the circumstances of his life. He goes, nope, I'm done. It's over. But even in those moments, he had eyes of faith. He had a spirit of faith that said, God, I'm still going to believe in you even when there's no reason to, because it's helpful to have reasons, but when there are none to still have faith, man, that's powerful. That's beautiful. This is a beautiful example to us because man, some of you, you don't have a reason to hope. You lost that a long time ago. It's gone. And there is no reason to hope. Even your friends or families or quote unquote friends would say, yep, you're, you're done. You're screwed, man. It's over for you. Uh, your career, your job, those relationships, you're never going to get married. You're never going to have a relationship. You're never going to get, you know, all those things that people say, because maybe, and you might be like, yep, they're true. I can't argue with them. And there's no reason to hope, man, but that's, but this is the faith that God wants you to have against reason. Keep believing. And then finally in this verse, verse 21, Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he promises. Oh man, I could, well, I'm going to preach about that one. Man, that's, that one's good right there to be fully convinced that God is able to do it all. Man, that is so important because in life, man, life, sometimes the storms of life hit hard, don't they? Sometimes it's so dark. We can't see the light at the end of the tunnel. And man, if we don't have these, the spirit of faith, we're going to be engulfed by that. We're going to lose hope. We're going to think God hates us. But even in those difficult times, like Abraham, man, we continue to believe. We are fully convinced. And that that the fully convinced there has this idea of no matter what circumstance. So maybe, you know, it's it's life's great, it's sunny. You're having a, you know, life's perfect and you're going well and and you ha- and you're fully convinced. Or when we looked at this passage of scripture over here where it says there's no reason for hope, you're still convinced. And you still get up in your life and God 
I, I am fully convinced your promises are true, that you're going to see me through to the end. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. It's a powerful, such a powerful thing in our life. And then here's uh, the last couple of verses. And here's what the, the last verse says. And when God counted him as righteous, it wasn't just for Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too. Guys, so this wasn't just a nice story that was written about Abraham for Abraham for us to go, oh, that was great. That was nice. How beautiful. Now, man, this is actually for us today here in VR chat, in VR church. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe in him, the one who raised Jesus, our Lord, from the dead. He was handed over to die because of our sins, and he was raised to life to make us right with God. Man, this is such good news for everyone in here, is that God loves you, and he wants you to experience his love and power. He wants to be in a relationship with us, and it doesn't matter the mistakes you've made. He wants you to experience it, and guess what? It's a free gift that he wants to give you today. And you know what's beautiful about it? You don't have to earn it. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to do any of those things. You just receive it by faith. And so here's the faith of Abraham, that God can bring dead things back to life, that God can create a new thing out of nothing for us to believe even when there's no reason to hope and for us to be fully convinced deep in our bones we believe. We don't see it with our eyes. We don't see it in our bank account or our circumstances or our career, just deep in our spirit. Man, we are convinced that God is true and that he will bring dead things back to life. I love it. It's so beautiful. It's such a powerful passage of scripture. Well, everyone, let me close uh, in a word of prayer here. And after we pray, uh, we are going to be dismissed. So let's take a moment uh, to pray. Thanks for so much for hanging out. Thanks so much for your attention and for, the, uh, for all those things. And so let's take a moment to pray. God, we just want to say thank you so much for all that you've done. And God, I'm fully convinced that you are working in each and every person's life. I don't know what's going on in their life, but God, I know that you're going to transform them, that you're going to help them. God, help us to rise to new dimensions in our life. Help us to have faith like Abraham, just to believe when things are dead, that you can turn it around and make them back to life, that you can make new things. There's nothing there, but you can make new things. Help us to have that faith. Help us to have faith even when there's like no reason. Forget about it. There's no reason to believe in it. God, help us to have faith and help us to be fully convinced of all these things. Help us not to have doubt. Help us to be to fully convinced that your promises are true. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, everyone. Well, that brings us to the end of our message for today, and that's the, the close of church. Uh, like I said, uh, definitely go back and read uh, Romans chapter 4, but you are dismissed, guys. Thank you so much for everything, and I hope that you have a blessed day, and I hope things go well for you. Thank you, everyone. Well, that's like a, it's got like a lot of static on that one. Oh, yeah, I heard it. <laughs> I heard you, uh, avoid this. <laughs> oh, look at that. The speaker makes noises. Ah. The speaker morphs. Uh, is it me? Is, Hi, is it me? Hey, go see. So, s- greetings. That's awesome. It's so funny. Hey. 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 <laughs> What's up with your uh, thing? Okay, obviously I have the right avatar right now. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna mute it. It's making a lot of noises. Uh, me? I I making a lot of noises. Is it you or someone else? Who's making the noise? Uh. It's, uh... Yeah, it's totally. Oh, sheesh. Okay. Uh, yes, I tried to change it. <laughs> It's like, oh, much better. It was chaos before. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get in a little. Oh, oh, what's going on here? Good that they changed the avatar at the end of the service. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat>
All right, hold on. Let me get my camera going here. Photo. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. All right. Here, oh, this is great. This is great. Hold on. In three, two, one, and captured that. And now everyone give me like, a, I don't know, wave or a peace sign or I don't know, whatever you want to do for this next shot. In three, two, one, and clap. Got it. All right. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate That's it. That's great. That was great. That's a good picture right there, man. No one. Hey, Noah.